wonderful session planned for you today. So I hope you all have your notepads and your questions ready. Um, shall we begin or shall we wait? No, you can, you can begin, Pari. All right. Um, all right, so uh, a very good evening to everyone joining in. My name is Pari. I am a career coach at MindLaw. And I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all to our webinar today. Like I said, we have a very informative and interesting session planned for you. So we are very thrilled to have you join us. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, over the next one hour, we are going to delve deeper into and explore the world of bachelors in computer application programs and data science. So I request all of you to keep your uh, notebooks and your notepads ready and your questions ready. Kindly feel free to use the chat box to post any questions that you have. Um, we shall make sure to take those up either during the webinar in the chat box or towards the end. Uh, we'll allot a separate 10 minutes for your questions. Um, now, for our speaker for today, we are fortunate to have Dr. Vinod Kumar Murthy. Dr. Vinod is the program director for BCA at Edusesta Institute of Management and Research. He is an industry turned academician who has a vast experience of 17 years in the engineering industry and 20 years in academia. Dr. Vinod holds an engineering degree in the mechanical discipline, an MBA in finance and marketing, and a PhD in finance. During his engineering career, he had served organizations like Westman Halvoshide Forgings Limited, LML Limited, Roto Pumps Limited, and Madhusudhan Nippon Limited. He had been to Germany and Bahrain for professional assignments as well. Dr. Vinod is at present also associated with the Institute of Analytics, headquarter at London, in the capacity of Country Head India, based in Bangalore. We welcome you, sir. Thank you very this much. Webinar, thank you. Thank you, sir. This webinar is being conducted in collaboration with the Edusesta Institute of Management and Research, which is India's leading entrepreneurship institute situated in the vibrant startup capital of India, Bangalore. As a pioneer institute with over 13 years of educational expertise, they offer a wide array of management and entrepreneurship programs. With end-to-end -end solutions exclusively designed for entrepreneurs of various scales and stages, EIMR has put together all the key elements required to build sustainable and scalable businesses under one roof. Poised to elevate the startup ecosystem by equipping founders with the tools they need, EIMR instills the entrepreneur entrepreneurial mindset that turns ideas into startup successes. Our moderator for today is Ms. Prasanna Velamuri. Ms. Prasanna is an internationally certified coach with a master's degree in mathematics and in management of information systems from India and the US. She began her career as an IT professional working in India and Spain before finding her actual calling, which is working with students. She has more than 10 years experience teaching math and Spanish in international schools in China and India. As a teacher and senior class advisor, she has spent a lot of time talking to students to understand what inspires and motivates them. She is now putting these insights and experiences to use as a career coach to help students make informed decisions about their future. Thank you for being here with us today, ma'am. This, so this webinar mm -hmm. today is brought to you by MindLaw. Mindler is India's leading career counseling firm, which focuses on helping students achieve career clarity. They have helped lakhs of students and partnered with more than 150 reputed schools across India to achieve the same. They have the world's most advanced career planning platform for schools developed by a team of alumni from Harvard, ISP, IIT, IIM, and the world's leading psychometrician. It has been incubated by IIM Ahmedabad and ISP Hyderabad. Mindler has been awarded the best career guidance platform by National Startup Awards, Entrepreneur India, and Education World. They have also been awarded and recognized 
by the Ministry of Science and Technology India and Ministry of State UAE. With that, I would like to thank all of you again for joining us today and pass the session on to Ms. Prasanna. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Pari. Uh, Dr. Vinod, very excited to talk to you. Um, so basically, we're going to be talking about the BCA in data science program that is offered at EIMR. So before that, it would be great if you could, because data science is a, is a buzzword right now. Everybody's talking about data science. Students are interested in doing data science. So it would be great if you could, if you could first begin by explaining what is data science and why is it such an important field of study right now? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much, Madam Pari, for a very wonderful introduction. Thanks a lot. And I'm very much so. delighted to have such a massive audience, 70 plus 74, and with August um, uh, guest and presence of Prasanna is making everything so wonderful, so beautiful. So, um, Madam Prasanna had asked that what this data science is. And uh, this is a buzzword, what she had said rightly, that yes, it's a buzzword. And uh, uh, it has gone beyond the buzzword since last uh, eight, nine months, uh, when uh, we, are, um, we, are, we are seeing that every newspaper, uh, I'm reading Times of India, Bangalore, and I am observing since last two months, my go. There are at least two big news uh, in the newspaper about data science and AI. Data science and AI. Primarily about AI. AI, AI, AI. Government wanted, bank wanted. My God, who, who is there who is not wanting AI? And AI is only an extension of data science. It is only a sub part of data science. So, the, the I would like to go a little bit back. This world had been changed by one major happening. And that happened somewhere around 1910 when the mass production started by Ford Motor Company. Henry Ford started uh, making cars and the mass production was the thing and that was the industrial revolution. And that had changed the world. That had changed the world. And the next thing happened after almost after 100 years in year 2000 when when this IT and computer science came to mainstream. I have completed my engineering in 1985. 1985, most of the students who are sitting in the audience uh, probably were on the, uh, on the way to arrive on planet Earth. So, uh, even electronics was not there in my college, although it was a very premium college. So electronics was not there. Then electronics came, electrical engineering and electronics came. Then computer science came, then IT came. And now we are seeing around us, whether you are from IT or you are not from IT. IT is around you. IT is around you. Computer science is around you. Technology is around you. And it had taken so much of uh, space in your personal life. Even for a rickshaw wala, he is using mobile and, and using n number of apps, he is using the technology. So technology had entered meaningfully, successfully and making a common man's life better. Laptops are easily available to each and every one. I recall in year 2000, this ordinary laptop was costing 1,25,000 rupees. Now, the same laptop is now available at 32,000 rupees. Now, coming back to that, what data science is, I have explained about that what technology is. We are surrounded by the technology. That is there, everyone, everyone is experiencing that. Now, what data science is, again, again, credit goes to computer science and IT professionals who have made the machines. When I'm using the term machine, it means laptop laptop or desktop, they have made the machines capable to store more information or in plain language, more data. Now, few years before, into till 2005, data means to me was Excel sheet with rows and columns. And recently I have learned since last 10, 12 years, the data means that Excel sheet plus music audio clips, videos, 
pictures, text, text messages, whatever we write in English, that is, that is, or in Spanish language or in any language, that is also data. 15 years before, my mind was not able to conceptualize that this can also be termed as data. So data is having a very big umbrella and it is having almost everything, whatever you see around you. And the capacity of the machines for storing that huge data is now feasible. And that is a turning point. That is a turning point. Since 2008 or 9, we have started listening the word big data, big data, big data. Oh my God, 10, 12 years before big data was a buzzword. Big data, big data, big data. And big, some other day we will discuss what big data is. For, for the time being, let us assume that whatever you are able to store in your machine, anything beyond that is called big data. But that is also solvable now because of cloud computing, cloud storage, and so many other things. Now, data is there with every company. State Bank of India, insurance companies, HSBC Bank, HDFC Bank, the mall which is near your house is now having huge data. Have you observed whenever you go and buy a cake from a pastry shop, before billing you, the person asks your phone number, ma'am, why he and very happily you give your phone number. That is data. And try to understand your phone number is connected to Aadhaar, to PAN, and now your entire information is available. So data is huge. See how we use WhatsApp. A day has come. I am the person who was very reluctant to use WhatsApp some eight years before or seven years before. Now without WhatsApp, we cannot survive. Without cannot, we cannot survive. Twitter, WhatsApp, Facebook, they have taken such a prominent uh, place in our life. In the morning, we get up, up, we take God's name later. First we see our mobile and check the WhatsApp messages which arrived last night. This is the status. And that is data, huge data. Now, now coming to the point, I have explained that data is there. Now, every business organization wants to understand the mood swing of their customers. HDFC Bank wants to know, Mall wants to know, your pastry wala wants to know. Now, they need to analyze that data. And such a huge data with pictures, audios, whatnot. Now, this has come out as a special discipline. Since last 10, 12 years only, in front of me only, I have seen that this term was coined, data science, data science. Earlier, it was not there. But remember, analysis of the data used to happen since when the man was living in caves. He used to sell four goats. Then in the, on the wall, he used to make four lines that four goats sold. And he used to do the analysis also. So nothing new. The quantum had become, become very much. And then we need to do it through programming languages. And now here programming is entering into the picture. So that is one thing. Data is very large. Number two, you need programming so that you can do repetitive works quickly, smartly, with accuracy, with a speed. And then so many other things are coming out. Finally, there are going to be numbers, 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 numbers. I was very much afraid when I, I came to know that Prasanna ma'am had taught mathematics for 10 years. Oh my God. And, all, and every third person is feared of mathematics. Even he is from physics, chemistry, mathematics, background, including myself, including myself. I am afraid of mathematics. <laughs> so um, then there is a special branch of mathematics which is called statistics because it is about the numbers. So how to analyze the numbers? And I am telling you, my dear friends, statistics is going to be a very weak part, one of the weakest part of those who are coming from IT and computer science background. They are good in programming. They are good in Java, C++, and, and HTML, PHP. But when it comes to statistics, 
because because of their background, this subject was not properly uh, taught to them. And nobody is to be blamed. There is no point to criticize anyone. But this is one area which is a building block of data science. So statistics, programming language, these two, and then visualization of the data. And all these things are to be done in such a meaningful way so that the decision maker, the manager or the management can, can take some actions on the conclusions of the uh, analysis of the data. And this has become this has become so hot, so hot that anybody who want to do it or who can do it is having a very high salary. Very high salary. I am unable to imagine that a person who is having two years of experience is now in two digits of CTC. My God, the, all, all these things I am witnessing. I am witnessing. So this is all about data science, and then. Then there is little bit more extension. That is AI. That is called artificial intelligence. Now, AI is a really a buzzword. Everybody is talking about that. And in plain terms, it is it is it is a programmed way, quicker way of doing repetitive things without human intervention. Without human intervention is the key one. When you enter into the airport, the doors are opened automatically. There are sensors. They judge that somebody is coming and open. No human intervention is there. So activity is performed without human intervention. That is AI. And we are seeing that it is everywhere. It is everywhere. It is everywhere. So in nutshell, this is about data science and AI. Is there any query, any question? That is brilliantly explained, Dr. Vinod. That was beautifully explained, really, and very passionately explained. So I can see that it is, you know, a topic that is dear to your heart. Thank you so much. That was a great explanation. So now if students are interested in studying data science, right, there are obviously many different ways in which they can do it. I mean, so many different kind of programs through which they can study data science, right? They can do a BSc in data science. Uh, like you had mentioned already, if you study computer science, also you will could study data science. So, you know, you could do a BSc in computer science, you could do a BTech, you could do a BBA in da with data science, BCA with data science. So how, how do these programs vary? I mean, in general, there's obviously going to be a lot of overlap. So how can a student who's interested in data sciences, how can they choose between these different kinds of programs, BSc in data sciences, BCA, BBA, with, you know, all these different kinds of programs? How could they choose? Awesome. Awesome query, awesome query. Yes, it is true that student is having a number of options for pursuing the career in data science, starting from IITs to then another engineering colleges and to uh, a number of options. Now, first, the first um, uh, uh, branch or the first bifurcation will come whether he should go for BTEC or whether he should go for BC. This is one very important thing. And data science is going to be here also, is going to be here also. If he's going to take BTEC now, now I, I, I am able to recall uh, six years before, many BTEC uh, courses or programs were not having the element of data science or here, or they were having very little. But now, in the current scenario, we cannot imagine a program or a course on BTEC computer science or BCA where some element of data science or um, analytics or AI is not there. Now, whether to go for BTEC or whether to go for BC. So I would like to take 10 seconds for that. BTEC is going to be four year course in our country from, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari and from Rajasthan to Assam. So it is going to be a four year course. BCA, on the other hand, is a three-year program. So one very clear-cut difference, clear-cut difference is this time. Four-year versus three-year. Students should keep in their mind that this is one thing. Now let us talk about the academic vigor. BTEC computer science, as they are going to have four years, 
is going to be academically very vigorous in terms of few subjects which are sometimes I feel so that why they are taking these subjects in such a depth. For example, they need to study physics again and there is a full funded course on physics. Number one. Number two, they are very, very vigorous, very, very rich on mathematics. So mathematics and physics, they need to uh, study again. I am talking about BTEC, BTEC computer science. And computer science primarily work with electric current. Everyone knows. I believe that the audience is largely from uh, uh, physics, chemistry, mathematics background who is interested in uh, computer courses. A computer, the machine works on electric and computer understands only 0 and 1. We, we learn this right from 9th class or 10th class and the electric current is very, very, it is the blood, it is the blood of a machine, a laptop or a desktop. Now I am coming to the point. In BTEC courses, they study electrical engineering also in a very, very deep manner. So three areas, electrical engineering, then electronics also. Now, just talking about electrical engineering is a old thought. That happened in my era also, 20 years before. Now, electrical engineering is incomplete. It is not clubbed with electronics engineering. Because you take a modern car or purchase a new car. My God, the moment you are on the steering wheel, you can very easily understand that majority of the facilities are electronically controlled. So electronics is also there. Electric current is there, electrical engineering is there, electronics is there. So electrical engineering, electronics, mathematics and physics. These are the four more areas as compared to BCA, which are very, which makes BTEC program very academically vigorous, lengthy by one year. This is one major difference one can easily spot between BCA and BTEC. Now I am going to BCA, BCA part. Now BCA is a three-year program. And this program, which is being offered by Bangalore University, which is one of the premium and one of the oldest university in our country, is having a three-year program. However, they offer four-year program also, where if four years are given by a student, then he will get BCA honors. So, at present, for the timing, we are not talking about four-year BCA program. We are talking about three-year BCA. Now, in this three-year BCA program, we can very easily understand, as the name says, computer application. So, the entire focus of BCA program is towards the application part of computer science. And this automatically, this automatically draws our attention towards four things. Operating, operating systems, computer architect, web designing, mobile application, and then software engineering and software testing. Now you see, these are the areas which are surrounded, surrounded everywhere. Mobile application. Now we are so much dependent on mobile. And every mobile is having n number of apps. So mobile application, web designing, whatever you do, if you are in business or if you are not in the business, you for, for anything, you have to go to Amazon Flipkart's website and you have to deal with the website. So website designing and those who are able to do fantastic website designing, their demand in the market is very, very high. Then digital marketing, Though um, digital marketing is not here directly in the DCA program, but I'm saying that this is another one area which has become very popular. Then computer architect. Now, a lot many companies are making computers like uh, HP, like Dell, IBM, so um, ACER. So, so many companies are making computers and they need engineers. 
who understand that how computer is architected. So computer architecture, web designing, mobile application, and whatever you do, ultimately at the back end, there is a software. And the software is having a program. So program, one has to be good in programming languages. BCA program is having programming languages like PHP, HTML, Python, C, Java. And additionally, we are we are, we are going to give certification on R programming also. R programming. R programming is also used in data science and machine learning. So this is the difference between BTEC and BCA. Now, what is the advantage to a student if he goes for BCA? He can enter into the professional world very easily with those type of knowledge and technology and skill set which will make him either a wonderful businessman or a wonderful corporate employee. So these are the these are the wonderful advantages of BCA. And that's why BCA is a hot cake. BC is a hot absolutely and Bangalore, right. Hyderabad, particularly mm -hmm. Bangalore, which is an IT city, mm -hmm. IT hub. Mm -hmm. Here, if we if I throw a stone on the road, the third person wants to do BC. So, so because because it is it is giving rewards, it is giving results, and they are making huge career into this. Now, BCA program of Bangalore University is already having data science and machine learning and AI already having. What at EIMR we have done, we have added 10 more hot or relevant certifications in addition to Bangalore University data science program. And these are cloud computing, spatial analytics. Now spatial analytics is what when you are uh, going through Ola or Uber, on the mobile it is clearly shown that he will reach there in so many minutes or the, the after 10 feet the, there is a jam or there is a congestion, traffic congestion. How all these things are being captured and in real time being reflected. It's a magic, my God, it's a magic whether everybody is able to appreciate or not but my God, magic happening, magic happening that what is what is happening after two kilometers you are able to see now. And this is called spatial analytics. A somewhat, a somewhat um, advanced type of thing, which is still not in uh, uh, college's curriculum, but we had included in our uh, special package of 10 certifications. IoT, Internet of Things, it is there. And one thing which I would like to mention, Python is by default the language for data science and machine learning. Python program. And uh, there is a very special tool which is called Orange. O-R-A-N-G-E. Orange. And this Orange is a tool where there will be a canvas, draw, circle, rectangle. No need to write codes. And without writing codes, you can build your machine learning models and you can do text mining, you can do computer vision, you can do IT, and all those things. We have included this orange also as one of our certification, which is a unique thing. I have cross verified in our entire country, nobody is teaching orange. So orange is going to be there. Social media analytics, Facebook analysis, Twitter analysis, or X analysis. Or WhatsApp analysis, so or Instagram analysis. Every company is very much interested to understand all these things. So that is also there. Power BI is there in the BCU uh, Bangalore University syllabus, and in certification we have added Tableau. So we all know that Tableau and Power BI they are they are almost on top with regard to visualization tools. So Tableau is there. This way we have articulated 10 wonderful certification courses for uh, making this data science AI very rich with regard to its academic rigor. Fantastic. So basically the BCA data science from EIMR has both all the components of a BCA program 
plus these 10 specific certifications, which are special, unique to data science. So it would literally be like a marriage between doing a BSc in, in data science plus a BCA, literally. Yes. You'll be learning the key points from both of these programs. Agreed. Correct. Fantastic. Wonderful. Great. Um, so I'm very happy. Actually, I would also like to do this program. I think it sounds very, very interesting. So can you tell me what kind of students are you looking for? I mean, so basically, are you looking for, you know, what is the eligibility criteria? Do they have to be uh, PCM students? Do you have to be, uh, you know, can you be a commerce student? Can you be a humanities student? Do you need mathematics in the grade, in grade 11 and 12? So what kind of students are you looking for? What is the eligibility for this program? Wonderful. So students should be from physics, chemistry, mathematics panel. That is one very, very important thing. And it is obvious. It is obvious. A art student will not go for joining BC. A student who has studied or who is interested in studying history, geography, will not come. Those who want to become medicine, go, want to go to medicine or study biology heavily, they will also not. So physics, chemistry, mathematics is definitely the requirement. And mathematics as a subject should have been studied. This is, this is about the number of subjects, name of the subjects, and the criteria or the cutoff is going to be that aggregate should be 50% mean. 50% mean. So then basically, this will be based on merit then. You don't have an entrance exam. No, specific. no. 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 They, they, okay. they, 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 we will respect 12th board. Okay. Whether it is state board or CBSC or ICSC, we will respect that score. And minimum mm -hmm. Percent, uh, if a, a student is having, mm -hmm. then uh, he's eligible. Eligible. Okay. Okay. So, um, do students um, in in this program will they have access to working on research projects or you know internships, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, with your industry partners? Yeah. So, in sixth semester in Bangalore University. They have one component of internship and project. So, so these two things are by default existing there in the syllabus as per the guidelines by the university. So internship is there and projects are there. Um, so also could you share some insight into the faculty who's going to be teaching this program over the next, it's a three-year program, correct? You, you will be, yes, of course. <laughs> so, I mean, you, I mean, you have, your expertise is incredible. So generally the expertise and research interests, you know, related to data science uh, of some of the other faculty members also. Yeah. So we are going to have, or we are having faculties. So they are qualified MCA. They have completed their MCA, pursuing their PhDs and uh, worked in the industry for 10, 12 years and uh, those type of very wonderful faculties will come and uh, share their knowledge and make students um, enthralled with, the, with this technology and this, with these concepts. Great. Um, so how do you foresee what would be the demand for data science professionals? How do you think it's going to grow in the coming years? Uh, and number of reports are there. If I have to give references, then probably I will have to speak for another 15 minutes for giving references only. But the net net, the bottom line is, the bottom line is that this area, data science, machine learning, and AI, is, is has still not attained the maturity. It is still on the growing curve. Still on the growing curve. See, chat GPT open uh, AI is just eight months old. Just eight months old, and uh, my God, it had it had uh, it had really um, um, made huge difference in way of thinking, in way of doing. So many things have uh, have been done by this. So coming 10, 12, 20 years, what I can see, at least 15, 20 years, are going to be the era of uh, data science AI. So this program, um, 
you know, I mean, you have decided on a curriculum, how it is going to be for three years. So as you yourself had mentioned, things are changing very quickly, right? So will the program also adapt to emerging trends and technologies? So what are, what are some unique uh, trends that are being incorporated into your program? Also, uh, from that angle, uh, uh, if you see, you, you have rightly said that in uh, every six months, the landscape changes. Every six months, something new enters into the domain. And the latest one is LLM, uh, large language models. So this is the latest one. So university had given us the option uh, of electives. Electives. And in the three years program, they have given the option of four electives. Oh, and they call it open elective. Open elective. And this means that student and, and the institute, primarily student, is free to choose any subject. Any subject from any domain. So we are we have we, we have utilized this particular facility for incorporating any changes if it takes place or if anything emerges, say in fourth semester. There is one open elective. And we have not decided that what is going to be the subject now. And this is a good thing which university had provided that say for example, large language models become so big and uh, this, this need to be taught as a subject. Then in fourth semester, we will, we will uh, teach LLM as a subject. So uh, I think that I have answered your question. That yes, absolutely. If, if, absolutely. That if, if, if a yeah. new thing comes, university is good enough that it had given that provision that uh, the two open electives yes. we can it. You can incorporate that. It's great. So could you just loosely tell me what the general structure of the three-year program is? So you said it's going to be six semesters, right? And so along with what they're going to be learning, which is essential to a BCA education, you know, these certifications that you have in data sciences, how do they come in? Do they do one every semester, two every semesters, or how does that work? So the university uh, style per semester, say there are going to be 10 subjects. Five are going to be, uh, four or five are going to be core technical subjects. When I say four or five, then as per university's nomenclature, laboratory sub is also included. So when I say data structures, which is going to be in first semester, so data structure theory and data structure lab. So these are going to be two courses. So likewise, in every semester, there are going to be four or five technical subjects. Other than technical subjects, they call it skill enhancement uh, courses. And that is a very good thing. So there they study physical uh, education, uh, NCC, uh, language, language one, language two, like this. So, and, okay. and, and, and uh, uh, accounting and finance, and these type of subjects appear there. And it is very good thing, very good thing. So university had this, and this is all uh, through uh, new education policy. This is all through new education policy. It's a good change, which I am seeing that student, now there is one subject called Indian Constitution. Now, it is really very good. Highly appreciated. Highly appreciated. That understand computer architecture, but understand Indian Constitution also. <laughs> and uh, okay, your mother tongue is uh, Tamil. And uh, if you decide to learn Bangla, good. It, it, it will make our country better. So, so it is good. So coming back to technical topics. So every semester is going to have uh, some uh, the, these type of subjects. Say in first semester, it is uh, discrete structures, data structures, problem solving techniques, and their C plus is going to be used. In one Java is going to be used. So like this. And name of the subjects I have mentioned like uh, web designing, software engineering, software testing, and like this. Got it. Okay. So um, if a student wants to understand now the difference between, so there is obviously 
Ma'am, ma'am. Um, yes. I believe that somebody is uh, looking at the. They're asking questions. Ah, yes. Because so I have questions. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, so we had also. Now, Swamya, EIMR is not a university. EIMR is the campus, is the management institute, is the institute, and university is Bangalore University. I'm just looking at the chat. Swamya, uh, can you take a note, please? Hmm? Sure, university sure. is Bangalore University. Huh? Huh, yeah, ma'am. Yes. So now, with the focus that you have on BC and data sciences in the in your program. Um, what would be essentially, so a student very, very interested in studying data sciences, what would be the main difference between somebody, say, between a BSc in data sciences and a BCA in data sciences? Oh, very complicated question. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually one of the questions that somebody had also wanted to know. So <laughs> Now... In BSc data science, their focus will be more on algorithm designs. Algorithm designs. Uh, in plain language for 12th class standard students so that they can understand, uh, BSc, as the name says, they go more deep into the academic uh, route. And academic route is the algorithm in case of data science or uh, anything. So they study or they design algorithms in a much heavier manner. Like an automobile engineer designs engine of the car. Now, we, those who study computer application, they are the user of those algorithms. So, so this is the difference. These are the application engineers and BSc data science are the designers of all the machine learning algorithms. Here we will not put more stress. However, there is a subject in BCA which is called algorithm analysis, algorithm design and analysis where we cover this, but we don't go to that depth. Though we understand the basic concepts, but we, we, we understand from the application end that, okay, this is the application, uh, this is the uh, API, and we use this API uh, with three words or four words, um, uh, and then uh, and the entire thing, the entire um, uh, process of classification. I'm trying to avoid the jargon, the classification or other things can be done. So whatever analysis you want to do, which can be a um, forty lines of code in Python, can be done by three words, which are API. So so here. Computer application students, BCA students is more interested in application of API. Whereas algorithm design person will take a deeper and longer route and design the algorithm for them. Got it. Okay. So basically, people who do a BCA in data science are actually more industry ready. And more industry ready, more application oriented. Oh, they, yes. can, okay. they can start okay. delivery, giving um, results right from day one. All right. Okay. So basically, students who are interested in that aspect and who basically would like to say uh, they want to finish studying and maybe work in it for a, work in the industry for a couple of years, then decide if they want to study further. This would be a great program for them. Yes. Okay. Um, so a student now who's in grade twelve, right? Um, they want to understand if. Data science is a field. I mean, like we said, it's a buzzword. They're hearing about it a lot. And they want to explore. Somebody in, say, the 11th or 12th grade, they want to explore this field a little bit. They want to understand it a little bit to know whether this could be something that they want to pursue. Are there any, you know, online courses or any kind of classes they can take for them to understand this, to make a decision whether they should pursue this in their bachelor's degree? Ma'am. Nowadays, students are so smart. Students are so smart that they know that in the classroom, this particular topic is being taught. And as, as a teacher, we also provide a number of resources which are available through online. We provide links and mention the resources that if you wish to go into more detail, then these are the links, these are the sources. Go there, visit and learn. So uh, now 
without saying this particular style has become part and parcel uh, or, or, or a regular practice by a good student. He does that. He does that. Your mic, Prasanna ma'am, your mic. Uh, Prasanna ma'am, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, perfect. Yes, yes, yes perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so for students currently who are listening to us, there are lots of students from grade 12 who are listening to us, right? What are the, some of the things that they should be aware of um, when they decide that data sciences is something you know, is a program that they want to pursue for in the bachelor's degree. In the sense of, in the sense that what are some of the things that they should be thinking about and maybe do a little bit of research on and understand before they come to the program? I mean, is they, can they prepare themselves in any way? Yeah, they can, uh, they can explore that, uh, what data science, machine learning, AI is doing nowadays, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what type of magics have been done by AI I would like to give one very interesting example that uh, Google had done one uh, uh, research project in Bangalore itself. Netrale, Netrale is one eye uh, um, hospital or something. So they had mm -hmm. conducted um, research on retina, retina of mm -hmm. eyes. And through retina, uh, it can be judged whether the, per the, the person whose retina is this is male or female smoker or not smoker, whether diabetic, not diabetic, chances mm -hmm. of heart attacks, and so many things. Body mass mm -hmm. index through retina. Sundar, there, there is a video of Sundar Pachai on this. And one, one when I had seen that video, my God, I was stunned that I never imagined that through retina, body mass index can be predicted. Or through retina, uh, diabetic level can be predicted. Now, 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 this is established that through retina it can be done. Now, in one day, a doctor will examine how many pictures of retina? How many pictures of retina? In one day, it means in eight hours. And if he, if he devotes his entire eight hours for examining retinas, pictures of retinas, when he will do practice, when he will go for surgery, he will only examining this. Now here we need one AI. We need to train the model who can do computer vision, who is quick to understand, differentiate the pictures of retina. And we can build a model and then this model, machine learning model or you can say AI model will be able to give fantastic results with absolute accuracy with tremendous speed with a human cannot match. A doctor can examine say 200 retinas in a day. But a machine can examine 2 lakhs retina a day. Probably 2 lakhs retinas in one hour. So these are some, these are great, super great examples how machine learning, data science, AI is impacting day-to-day um, -day life and contributing towards healthcare and so many things. So students can so explore. Explore those, absolutely. Watching videos, you know, Coursera courses, absolutely. Uh, the other question I had was, so what kind of, I mean, there are parents also listening to us, so they are, of course, interested in what kind of career opportunities will a student have after finishing a B, BCA in data sciences versus if they do only a BCA, so BCA in data sciences, BSc in data sciences, or just a BCA? Would there be a big difference in the kind of job opportunities that they would have? As I said, that BSc data science, people will go where the actual algorithm designing is their main task. Correct. So, mm -hmm. meaning thereby that we can very easily imagine that the job quantum is going to be less. One designer, but 20 application persons. So, that, that ratio is going to be there. Now, BCA students are, are taken by all GMs like Google, IBM, TCS, Wipro, Infosys, Mindtree. And these are the big names. My God, there can be thousand names in Bangalore itself where students can uh, join those wonderful companies and then make their career. 
So, um, could you talk a little bit about the campus? What kind of opportunities, other than academics, what other kind of opportunities are the students, you know, what kind of opportunities will the students have? Will they have people from the industry coming and giving their master classes? So, what would the student life be like? Now, here I would like to uh, mention one thing. Uh, I would like to utilize the available time. Uh, that's this particular institute, EIEMR, and its name is Educesta Institute of Management and Research, is known for its uh, flagship entrepreneurship program. This institute is very famous in the country for their entrepreneurship programs. And in this BCA course also, there is going to be a element of entrepreneurship. In one open elective, we had given uh, an inter entrepreneurship toolkit taught by, by big, big entrepreneurs of our city. And uh, professors from Mexico and professors from UK and US also travels and then they discuss with students. So as BCA knowledge can be very easily transmitted into a business idea. So, this is one very wonderful opportunity, which is unique opportunity by this institute only in our country, where these BCA students, if they have that spark of becoming entrepreneur, or if they want to start their startup, or if they have some innovative idea, then this institute will uh, will nurture their idea, will provide the right thinking, and they go to the next level also. If the student's idea is liked by the investors, EIMR is having a pool of investors also, then they, the, the student can, can think of getting seed money and initial money also. This is amazing. That is incredible. 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 That's an incredible opportunity. Amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely. It is nowhere. It is unparalleled. Yeah. It is not there in our country. Yes. It's not there in our country. And so the student. And if a student says, no, boss, I am not interested in uh, making a business, I will go for a job. Then, uh, okay. other okay. than Bangalore, there can be can yeah. not a better place yeah. for uh, computer Absolutely. science. So, literally, you have like an incubator, literally, for students exactly. if they want to come up with ideas. Incredible. That's a great opportunity. So, is there anything more that you would want to mention, Dr. Vinod? You know, any, any question that I have not touched upon, anything about the institute, anything about the course in specific that you want to highlight about the faculty, about the structure of the program, anything that you would like to highlight? Vanya Chandak is asking, is it better mm -hmm. to learn data science in India or abroad? One of my students went to Australia, spent 22 lakhs rupees, 22 lakhs rupees because it is Australia and the person is from Gujarat and one businessman's son went there came back, before he came back to India, his batchmates with one-fourth of money got three times of the placements as compared to that person. This is only a notion that in abroad, in Australia, in the USA or in New Zealand, only there we can get good knowledge. Now gone are the days, possibly. 30 years before, 40 years before, that was the case. But now in our country itself, in our country itself, you will have wonderful infrastructure. I humbly request everyone to visit our website and go to campus too. It is seven star. It is like a seven star. <clears throat> Air conditioned classrooms, cushion chairs, and then smart uh, boards. Awesome. Awesome it is. The campus, ambience, and at the heart of the city. Otherwise, university is 20 kilometers away from the main city. In jungle. They make university in jungle. Here it is not going to be the case. And because of the location, we are able to bring top-notch professors and top-notch industries to visit our campus and to share their knowledge with students. So my humble request, everyone should please have the campus to of uh, which is available on the mm -hmm. website. Um, small request to parents, small request to parents that <clears throat> please do not over pressurize your kid, son or daughter and check, check the genuine interest of the uh, kid. Uh, 
uh, we are not selling anything. It is not like a sofa set that you have purchased and after four uh, four days you say sofa is not grow good. I am not liking and take it back. It is not like that. It is the career and future, entire future life of a kid. <clears throat> so humble request to parents that if your if your son wants to be a dancer, please allow him to become a dancer. If your daughter wants to become a cook, kindly allow her to become a cook, a professional cook. Huh? So this is my humble request because I have seen that parents are still imposing their wish, their will on 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 their students, which, which should be stopped now. Now in our country there are n number of opportunities. <clears throat> a boy or a girl of 15, 16 years old can can pursue any career, whatever he or she wants. If if the kid is interested in computer science, if he likes computer, this, this message I'm giving to parents. If if parents are are confident that their kid is liking this this field, then only allow him or her to enter the field. So I, the, we have posted the link to the program, the BC and Data Science. So we really encourage the students and parents to check it out. Like Dr. Vinod says, understand a little more about the program, see if you have a genuine interest in it, and then decide if you want to apply. I think there was a quick there was one question, Dr. Vinod. Is it possible? Somebody wanted to know: Is it possible to do only the certifications? No, no, separately. No, it's no. not right. It's a pro. Okay. I, I I would like to tell you that if, for that particular student. On these topics, there are a number of vendors available uh, in the market who can give you uh, a certificate. And one name Madam had uh, mentioned a few minutes before, Porsche. So you can go there. And there are likewise many. They will charge something reasonable and then can give you the certificate. Now, what I have experienced that you need a hand holding. At this age, age of 16 and 17, difficult to learn a subject like data science from online mode. It is good for a person who is working with Infosys, having 10 years of experience, is having some knowledge and want to polish that and want to go into the detail for him. And actually those courses are designed for those type of persons. Now there is a trend that I can learn from them or through online. If I have seen a 16, 17 years old boy cannot understand. Cannot. You will get the certificate, but getting the certificate will is not the purpose. You need knowledge. And for that purpose, you need a teacher in front of you. Uh, you should ask questions and teacher should be able to explain all the perspectives, all the angles. Then only you will have some knowledge which can be applied. Otherwise, doing things in a very mechanical mode from A to Z, have a certificate, and when the real data will come in front of you, then you do not know from where to start. And so, so these type of things happen. Right. You won't understand the context and how what the perspective is, how do you actually use it? Absolutely. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Vinod. This, you explained what data science was, the difference between the various ways of studying it, what is important about BCA, what is important about studying data sciences. Thank you so much. A uh, very, very interesting program that you have, uh, the BCA in Data Sciences. I hope the students and parents have you know, got the opportunity to understand it. Are there any last minute question? We can answer one more question if anybody wants to type in. Please, don't try. As a teacher, I like questions. <laughs> if you don't ask, I think that my time got wasted. <laughs> yes. You explained thank everything you. very beautifully. So, Chutapa, thank you very mm -hmm. much. SR, thank you. So there's one question in yes. the chat box that yes. says, how is big data used for predictive analytics models? Does BCA in data science help one get into this domain? Okay. <laughs> now, uh, that here, the tricky thing is big data. That, that the word which is creating disturbance in mind is big data. Otherwise, it is analysis, simple analysis. Say, imagine one Excel sheet which are having 50 rows and four columns, small data. Whatever you can apply on that, that you can apply on big data. Now, what is the definition of big data? 
the definition of big data is which your machine cannot handle, your RAM cannot handle. Possible that your RAM can handle, but my my in my computer, my RAM cannot handle. Then that data will not be a big data for you, but for me, it will be a big data. So this thing should be clear to everyone that it, the concept of big data varies from machine to machine. If your machine is not able to handle any data, then it is big data for you. That's it. Some of you, ma'am, um, Pari ma'am, probably you might have observed when you are having um, 4 million rows in Excel sheet, even your machine is good. Sometimes a simple operation of summation takes three minutes because the data size is three millions. Simple Excel sheet, simple Excel sheet. So the concept of big data should be clear that if your machine can handle, it is not a big data. And if machine cannot handle, it's a big data. Now what to do? Then we go for cloud computing. Then your data will be taken onto cloud cloud services like Amazon, Microsoft Azure, uh, Google uh, Cloud Services, Google Cloud Platform. Uh, these three are major players. AWS is still number one. So they provide you their facilities. And now your machine is capable with the help of their facilities. And you can do all plus, minus, divide, subtraction, addition. Analytics or data sciences, wh wh what is going to be there inside? Plus, minus, mathematics, divide, multiply, square root, cube root, log, all these things are going to be there in different, different steps. So you, you will be able to do all type of operations with the help of cloud. So I think that I have answered. Don't worry about big data. Big data problem can be solved through cloud. And whatever you can do, you can do with any data. And those things are being taught in this ECA program. A quick question was, what's the difference between, a, uh, is there any major difference for future career prospects between a BCA honors, which is four years, and a BCA, which is three years? Yes. Now, if you go for fourth year also, then you will learn two more semesters. And it means that some eight more technical subjects, very simple. So this is going to be the advantage. And it's a good thing if you if you prefer to uh, stay one year more, wonderful. Your idea advantage, you will learn more. This is this is the difference. Now, but what what is the trend? We have observed the trend that ninety eight percent ninety eight percent students opt for three year program. They don't prefer to go for fourth year. And nothing wrong, students. When I was a student, then I was also wanted to finish my course as soon as possible. Nobody would like to remain in the college for a longer time. You know? So nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Now, what we had done, you might have heard about 10 certifications. What we had done, the if you do not go for the fourth year, then your loss should not be there. That's why we had picked those topics and made the basket of these things. So we are making sure that our student who is going for regular BCA is not going to be deprived of the needed knowledge by the industry. Got it. So the 10 certifications will be in the three years. Yeah. And after BCA, you can go for job, you can go for uh, your startup, or you can go for further study. You, you can do masters in computer application and then later on you can do PhD. Later on you can do delete also. So double PhD. So sky is the limit. If you want to study, please continue. Please continue. So thank you very much, Dr. Vinod. Um, parents, students, I hope you will go online and check out the program BCA in, in uh, data sciences, which is being offered by EIMR. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Vinod. Thank you, Pari. And thank you, parents and students for joining. Thank, thank you, you very much, Prasanna, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you so thanks much. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Thank Bye. you, Prasanna. Bye. Take care. Bye -bye. God bless you all. Thank God you. Bless you. Yeah. Bye bye.